So October has come and gone and that means another Ubuntu release has dropped. There is a new Ubuntu family in the wild now, codenamed Wily Werewolf, funnily enough. So this is my quick video review of the Ubuntu 15.10 desktop. So let's get into this. So the main story with Ubuntu 15.10 is GNOME 3.16. Granted, this is a bit of a dated version of GNOME now, but a lot of what you see in terms of the improvements to the look and feel of Ubuntu come from GNOME 3.16. Uh, everything looks a little bit more spaced out now. Uh, everything looks a little bit more even than what it did in times past. And the other thing that I really appreciate is the new scroll bars. So when you are now scrolling the web or scrolling in a file browser, you now have instead of the rather fiddly overlay scroll bars that we had in times past, we now actually have a pretty, uh, a pretty nifty scroll bar that pops out to the side. It's much easier to grab than what the overlay scroll bars were in the past. So that is a great improvement in my opinion, but really by and large, I feel like the story with Ubuntu 15.10 is that really GNOME is getting so good now at being a user-friendly desktop that it's a bit hard for Ubuntu to go on ignoring it and pretending that Unity is its own beast because so much of it is dependent on GNOME and, uh, and GNOME is really getting good if simplicity, ease of use, and, uh, and elegance is your thing. Now, of course, elegance is completely subjective, but we're going to get back to that in a bit. What are some of the new improvements that are in Ubuntu 15.10? Well, one of the things that they have improved in the uh, in the dash here is drag and drop. So you can pull an app out of the you can pull an app out of the dash and put it on the desktop as a desktop shortcut. So I'm sure most of you will be happy to see desktop shortcuts make a bit of a comeback. Obviously, there are also spec bumps across the board with version numbers. So we have the Linux kernel 4.2. You have a new toolkit that has been made available for Android development platforms. So it's called Ubuntu Make. And basically, it's a command line utility for developer tools. And it includes a full Android development environment. So I think that's a nice addition to add into what Ubuntu is useful for. And also, I think it's interesting they add native support for the Steam controller out of the box as well. So this will be interesting to see what they can bring uh, to the floor with that, uh, with the imminent release of SteamOS and all of that sort of thing in its updated form. So I got to say that the test rig that I've been putting this on is a 2011 Dell XPS 15. It's got an i7 processor, 256 gig of solid state uh, storage, 8 gig of RAM and an NVIDIA 540M graphics card. And I got to say, it's very, very snappy. Obviously, you'd expect it to be snappy on this kind of hardware. But even in uh, app launch times and, uh, and multitasking and that kind of thing, I noticed it actually is substantially quicker than what the Ubuntu LTS release was which uh, at this point I think is 1404. And that's what I was previously running uh, before I switched. So the uh, the overall responsiveness of the desktop is really quite nice. And also I got to say that the trackpad for some reason is a lot more sensitive uh, in this revision of Ubuntu than, uh, than previous versions as well. I don't know if I like it or not, but that's just an observation. One of the other things that I might need to add is that while Ubuntu seems to be a little bit more hungry on the resources, we were using about 600 meg of RAM when the system had a cold boot. And you can see with a few things running, we're running well over a gig. So it's certainly not beastly by any stretch, but it definitely seems to be hungrier than past releases. But at the trade-off of everything being snappy, I don't think I really mind that much. One thing that I also did notice is that it's a lot quieter on the fans uh, in this particular laptop. The fans do kick up relatively regularly, um, but on this release, we, they seem to be kicking up a lot less than what they did on previous releases. So uh, having said that, though, battery life is still terrible unless you install something like TLP laptop tools or something of that nature to try and optimize the battery uh, for the battery life a little bit better. Um, and while there were no driver issues for me personally with the hardware of Ubuntu 15.10, there have been a pretty well publicized AMD driver issues um, that they will be providing a fix for in the very near future. Basically, in order to install the AMD Catalyst drivers, yeah, the Catalyst is not working at all at the moment. 
um, but there should be a fix very soon from when this video was published. So overall, the Ubuntu 15.10 release is a bit of fit and polish. There are a few tiny little features, but to the untrained eye, it looks exactly like Ubuntu has looked for the last couple of years. And this is where I start having a bit of a problem with Ubuntu. Basically, the online integration, as, an, as a good example, online integration was a fantastic idea um, that I really liked the idea of. The, uh, the ability to tie in all of your online services to the Ubuntu desktop looked very promising a few years ago. To be honest, it really hasn't moved at all uh, in those last couple of years. So while you can still tie in your Google, Facebook, and Twitter accounts, there is really no further fleshing out of that idea. What I'd love to see are things like, um, are things like cloud storage integrated in through this little menu here. I'd love to see the email client Thunderbird take these settings on board as well. Um, I'd like to see even adding Twitter into your account here so that you can actually add a Twitter app or maybe some app recommendations for good apps that can tie in with the online accounts panel. So those are just some of the suggestions that I was hoping to see when this feature debuted, but it really hasn't moved much at all. Uh, also, the other thing is, is that, let's be honest, the Dash online suggestions really still aren't that helpful. Uh, when you search for something, you do get some online results and you can search in eBay and, and other places. But really, at the end of the day, these are really more affiliate links that just to help keep um, Ubuntu up and running in terms of a little bit of extra revenue on the side, which I don't have a problem with. But again, they make it nice and easy to turn it off. I still don't really see the use of it, though, in terms of my everyday use case. Um, so, and the other thing is, is that hasn't really changed at all is um, installing apps through the Ubuntu Software Center. Again, it's still kind of old, clunky and busted. They really need to do something with this Software Center and I really hope that they're planning on something before the next LTS release. Um, and also one of the issues that I found with this particular revision of Ubuntu is that sometimes some of the apps that I've installed uh, either through AppGet or Synaptic, which to be honest are probably quicker than the software center, if you know what you're looking for, sometimes those apps would take a little while to show up in the dash. Sometimes I'd even have to log out and log in again to see those results coming through. So... Really, in conclusion, Ubuntu is still by far one of the easiest Linux systems to pick up and use, and even simpler to hand to your grandmother, as it has great performance, great support, and a, and a relatively simple user experience. But with all of the leaps and bounds that are being made in the GNOME edition of Ubuntu and Kubuntu and Zubuntu and all of the other family members, there really isn't much here in Ubuntu 15.10 that would sway a happy Linux user from their current distro. And I gotta say, that's definitely true for me. 